So what we have right here today is the Lenovo Gaming Pad 3. This is the 15 ACH6 model. It's uh, coupled together with the CPU from AMD. This is the Ryzen 5 5600H 3.3 gigahertz. The storage right here is uh, 15, uh, well, 512 gigabytes SSD coupled with 16 gigs of RAM and it packs together the RTX 3050, which is a four gigabytes card. Uh, yeah, and uh, well, it's all put together with a display of 15.6 inch, which is an IPS display. Yeah, let's unpack this guy and see exactly what comes included in the box and then let's put it through its paces. What comes included in the box are some accessories for your two and a half inch drive. As you can see here, I'll just uh, open them, them up quickly and see exactly what we're talking about. Uh, this seems to be some spongy bits, a adapter of sorts with a, uh, well, of course, a ribbon cable in case you want to open up your PC and add an extra two and a half inch drive into your computer. So I guess this is what this is all about. Let's put this aside a bit. And uh, well, what we have here is the power cable, of course, your Mickey Mouse earplug style. Uh, this is what you get. Furthermore, of course, the all important battery pack. So this is a 135 watts uh, power brick right here. It's not that big, it's not that heavy. And it seems to be doing the job fairly well because uh, this uh, GPU is not very powerful and is not very power hungry. Neither is the CPU. And of course, the star of the show right here, which is the laptop itself. So let's get this out. Oh, come on. Why are you slipping away? Oh, there we go. Yay. Ta-da, this is the laptop itself. So this is the laptop itself. Let's open it up for the first time and see exactly if it passes the one-handed test, which, uh, well, it, it does. It opens up with one hand, which is fairly nice. You have some, well, stickers right here, GeForce RTX and the like. And this is the overall laptop itself. It has a privacy screen here. So as you can see for your camera, you can switch it on or off. That's uh, fairly nice to have in this day and age. And well, I'm quite interested right now to see exactly how is the build quality of this laptop. So I'll set you guys down and see exactly what we're talking about. So the overall quality of the laptop right here. Well, um, it's a lot of plastic. I'll tell you that it's not very uh, heavy in the hands. So, well, it's not very light, but it's not very heavy. It's not all that inspiring in terms of quality with its uh, weight. But anyway, that's pretty good. Uh, you have some ventilation here on the back, as you can see. So uh, this should provide plenty of cooling, I guess, for this small uh, GPU and the small CPU, right, that it's inside. And as you can see, once again, this is the uh, Gaming Pad 3, 15 ACH6. So this is the brand model of this laptop right here, in case you want to look it up. In terms of the I.O. on this laptop right here, so we first have to start off with the uh, power connection which is proprietary for Lenovo, as you can see here. Then you have the typical RJ45 Ethernet connection. This is a uh, HDMI 2.0 port right here. And this is coupled together on this side with the USB-C. This is a 3.2 Gen 1 uh, port right here. Some ventilation, and now we can well, as well see a little speaker port. So this is a downwards firing speaker uh, on this uh, model of laptop right here. Moving on on the other side right here, as you can see, this is your headphone jack and you have two uh, USB 3.2 Gen 1 connectors right here, coupled with the downwards uh, firing speaker of this laptop and another, well, uh, exhaust uh, for your fans inside the laptop. On the back of the laptop itself, you don't have much going on. This is just a plastic uh, cover right here. This says IDEA 
pad gaming and these are some rubber feet for your uh, laptop so that it can stick to your um, well desk and not move anywhere which uh, well it's pretty sturdy it's pretty good so these rubber feet are actually doing their uh, job pretty nicely all right now let's see if it's at all bendy or stretchy it feels quite okay it's uh, just flexing a little bit of course you should flex it's made out of uh, well plastic and it doesn't seem to be very thick plastic at all all right so let's see how this laptop feels it feels sturdy enough although it is flexing somewhat when you push down on it and the keys will have a uh, a deep enough uh, touch to them so they go down quite a ways they feel quite tactile and they feel good they don't feel at all very hard on your fingers it feels like uh, just any normal keyboard nothing special or uh, exciting uh, going on on the keyboard side of this laptop all right let's uh, move on to inside the laptop and see exactly what we are working with all right so this is the laptop right here i think that for the amount of money that you can expect to pay for this right here i think right now at the moment of uploading this video this laptop goes from anywhere in between 600 to 800 dollars so definitely for that amount of money i think it is a well okay laptop it's not something uh, well terribly well built but it's definitely something good that will keep you going for the next few years i would suspect but uh, the question that i have is actually coming down to this uh, nvidia rtx right here so the 3050 which is only four gigabytes of ram i am not sure that this is enough in this day and age but uh, we'll definitely put it to its paces i have to install the os on this uh, device right here and uh, once i do that then we'll definitely run some games and see exactly what we are working with so in case you are wondering what a laptop that doesn't have a uh, os installed on it looks like this is definitely what you can expect when you first boot it up so yeah well device boot uh, missing or boot failed this is quite normal it doesn't have an os i would say that this is a drive that it has installed on it and of course once i select it it goes back to checking the media and of course the prompt once again that it has no os installed on it so as i've said let's go ahead and install uh, i will install actually windows 11 on this uh, bad boy right here and get back to you guys once this is done Well, I would say Lenovo learned a few lessons and they're actually doing things right with the memory configuration because, uh, well, as you can see here, we have two slots, two out of two used and the maximum speed right out of the box is 3200 megahertz and you have 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that means you have two 8 gig sticks of in, the, uh, in, the, um, in there, which is uh, fairly nice to populate it because the Ryzen CPUs are definitely um, feeling a drag if you don't uh, use the correct configuration for your memory. So this CPU should run fairly well with both of the memory slots being populated which is very nice to see from Lenovo coming straight out, out of the box. So here we have Battlefield 5 running on this laptop right here. So uh, we are running on 1080p 120Hz. This is the refresh rate of this panel. Uh, the overall settings that I'm uh, using right now and I'll give you a taste of the performance is running on auto max fidelity. So that means basically DX12 it's enabled, uh, we have the DXR enabled as well, this is the direct uh, ray tracing. We don't have the DLSS enabled and we have the high dynamics set on auto. So let's see what this gives us with this game. Um, okay, so this is the single campaign. We are running at, well, just over 60 FPS, which is uh, quite acceptable. The memory usage, as you can see, it's sitting at around three, well, close to four gigabytes, which is the max rating of this RTX 3050. And the iGPU, well, or the APU, I should say, for this uh, R, um, well, for this uh, Ryzen 5 5600H, it's sitting at a toasty 76 degrees with uh, above 90% utilization. Um, yeah, so let's uh, give it a whirl. Let's play a little bit and see exactly how the temperatures are looking after some gameplay. So I have been playing this game for a solid 20 minutes now and uh, well the temperatures more or less uh, tend to stay the same. Uh, I would say that CPU temperature is quite toasty, it's getting all the way up to 97 degrees which is not for my liking, even uh, creeping up to 98 at times as you can see here. The maximum rating for this uh, Ryzen 5 5600H, I, I saw that uh, given by AMD, it's 105 degrees Celsius which is quite toasty but I would say uh, yeah what can you expect it's a, it's a laptop I mean it's it's not a full-fledged CPU with a full-fledged cooling solution on it 
So you have to share the cooling solution for both the CPU, the APU and the GPU. So I would say that is quite an intensive task for this here laptop. But uh, yeah, I would say it's fine to run these temperatures as high given that the manufacturer actually gave you a uh, lay layover or uh, I would say lean over to 105 degrees but that's uh, that's a bit too much for my liking anyway um, definitely it's doable you can play on it it, it doesn't get more louder than this uh, but yeah uh, well it's, it's it is what it is 90 97 98 degrees at times so this is what you can expect to get out of your temperatures using the CPU for gaming and probably other uh, well intensive tasks uh, related to the CPU usage as well so let's uh, set up the microphone right here next to the laptop and see exactly what sound that we can get out of these fans when they go full crank. In terms of the IPS display rate, so this is giving us 120 hertz uh, refresh rate. But I would say that uh, sitting at 250 nits, this display panel is not very bright. So right now I am in a room which is uh, fairly well lit by a window that I have on the right, on the left hand side of the screen right here. It looks okay, but the brightness in game is set at something like 65. The standard brightness of the game is actually looking more like this. This is 50%. And it, it, it doesn't feel very bright. I mean, it doesn't feel very bright at all. So as you can see right here, this is the maximum display uh, setting. So this is the maximum brightness that you can set on this IPS display. And it's not looking very bright, I can tell you that. This is definitely one uh, drawback of this uh, PC, or I should say this laptop right here. Uh, it is a bit juggery, a bit stuttery, as you can see. Uh, although it's sitting at 60 FPS, it, it doesn't feel very smooth uh, with the recommended settings. Uh, it is a bit stuttery at times. Uh, that's definitely something that I can tell you from playing this uh, this game right here. And it doesn't feel very smooth. It doesn't feel like 120 hertz the refresh rate. I could tell you that for sure. I went into settings and I actually looked it up, and it is set at 120 hertz uh, for this IPS panel, but it doesn't feel very uh, smooth or as smooth as I would have actually um, cared for it to be. If you are actually going to have a window right behind you with the screen it will not actually feel very good as you can see with the window staring directly at the IPS panel uh, you do have quite a lot a lot of glare although they rec they say that this uh, IPS panel right here is anti glare I don't know what or is there any degree to this anti glare it could be more it could be less anyway this is what an IPS panel from this laptop will actually give you with the window being right uh, well right behind you and uh, staring it uh, directly at the monitor so uh, yeah if you if you would tilt it of course it's going to have better contrast and you can actually see uh, a little bit better on the screen um, it does actually have 170 degrees uh, field of view or I should say um, view, viewing angles on this laptop right here so as you can see you can still see something even though I'm uh, fairly close to the monitor and fairly offset as an angle. But um, yeah, this being said, as long as you have a light behind you, be it a natural light or artificial light, it's not going to give you all the best uh, angles that uh, you are going to look for in this uh, laptop as viewing angles. All right, so next game on the list here, we have Cyberpunk 2077. Um, I have been playing this game for the past 20 minutes or so and as you can see we have the same uh, more or less issue like uh, with Battlefield 5. The CPU temperature gets quite toasty as you can see it's just hovering uh, right below 90 degrees there and well it's, it's running quite fine it's uh, more than uh, well 70 FPS right here. I would imagine that the city maybe gets you 60 FPS. Um, let's see exactly the settings that we are running right now. So uh, if we go here into settings and graphical settings, as you can see, we have the quick presets set to high, everything set to high, the DLSS is set to off, maybe we can set it down to auto, and well, the super resolution, <laughs> let's set that to auto as well and see exactly what we can get. And well, the rest of the settings seems to be, well, quite okay, running on high. We have ray tracing, so let's try ray tracing and hit apply and see what happens. Uh, we actually managed to, well, surprisingly stay the same. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it, it looks it looks better. It dropped down to about 60 something FPS. So, uh, well, low 70s, high 60s. That's uh, that's fairly good. 
for this title running on this uh, CPU right here. Uh, surprisingly enough, the CPU temperature dropped by about 4 degrees, so that's something. Oh, it's, well, never mind, it's steadily climbing, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, well, the GPU is sitting at, well, 70 degrees and the CPU at 90. So this is more or less the um, experience that you can get with this machine. It does get a bit loud, of course. It has to support that uh, APU and uh, the CPU working quite hard together along with the RTX 3050. And uh, although the MSI actually shows that the RTX 3050 usage is not doing very much, the RTX 3050 is actually working together with the APU, with the CPU. Um, they're all working together, sharing that four gigabytes of memory. And they're actually doing quite a fairly okay job, considering that we're running uh, Cyberpunk 2077 1080p high settings with DLSS and ray tracing enabled. So what are my initial thoughts after using this machine for the past few days? Uh, actually, I'm pretty happy with it for the amount of money that I've paid. So I've told you before, you can actually go ahead and purchase this laptop from anywhere in between 600 depending on some offers, to $800. So uh, for the amount of money that you're paying, you're definitely getting a decent uh, product, I would say. Uh, yeah, it feels plasticky overall. The case, it's all made out of plastic. It is uh, quite a flimsy plastic. It's not brittle or it doesn't give you the sensation of immediately breaking if you're gonna drop it. But definitely it's not something very sturdy that you can find in other laptops or more premium laptops, I should say. And the RTX 3050 is actually doing quite an okay job at gaming. Uh, I don't like the fact that the CPU goes all the way up or even surpasses the 90 degrees Celsius barrier while gaming on it. But I would say that, uh, well, this is the cooling solution that they have provided for this amount of budget for this laptop right here. Uh, AMD states that 105 degrees Celsius is more than acceptable for the CPU, but I would definitely uh, keep an eye out because I am not happy with anything going past 90. Of course, uh, when I talk about uh, laptops or computers in general, I do care about the longevity of them. So being items that are very expensive, I do care to keep them uh, in optimal uh, running condition for more than a few years. So definitely reaching over 90 constantly if you're doing some hard gaming on it will definitely require you to at least inspect the thermal paste on your CPU maybe once every few years. Um, if not, even uh, clean the, the overall fins and the overall fans on this PC just to keep it running uh, optimally. Because anyway, just as it is right out of the box, with all the um, components clean, it reaches more than 90 degrees C. So I would imagine after a few years of using this computer and neglecting it and uh, uh, building up a lot of dust, it could easily surpass 96, 97 degrees C. So yeah, you might just want to be uh, keeping an eye out for the cooling solution over the years. Another thing that I definitely don't like about the laptop is uh, the fact that this anti-glare panel that they're using is not really that anti-glare, it's quite reflexive. Uh, reflective so uh, you can see we have a light over there that's coming from a window actually and depending on the viewing angle they say you can go all the way up to 170 degrees but you can definitely see some glare so if you're planning to use this laptop with some natural source of light or maybe some uh, artificial light source right behind the screen you can definitely expect to see some glare on the screen itself which can be quite disturbing uh, depending on the games that you play you have to crank up your brightness all the way up in order to maybe see something so this was definitely something that uh, really bothered me while using this laptop um, but uh, I, I think it's it's workable uh, as long as you crank up the brightness in some certain titles or maybe overall when using the laptop so right now we have the crank the um, as you can see, the brightness all the way cranked and we can still, we are still able to see some of the natural light coming from the background there. Um, the overall IPS screen is not very bright. The official uh, nits are, I think it's 250 for this laptop right here, given by the uh, Lenovo producer. So that's not very bright. I mean, consider that maybe the iPhone 13 or basically every iPhone that came after 2020 onwards, they have at least 800 nits of brightness when using the phone outside. So I would imagine to taking this laptop outside and maybe trying to use it uh, while being in direct sunlight is going to be quite a challenge. Uh, because as you can see, indoor can be quite a challenge where the light is controlled or more or less if you have a natural light source from behind, you can actually see some very bright spots that will make it very hard to uh, look at the screen. All right, this laptop right here actually supports 45 watts of battery power. 
uh, this is a very good battery and the lifespan of the battery they can say it can go all the way up to six hours and it supports rapid charge pro which basically means that you can charge this laptop up to 50 percent of the battery in 30 minutes time but there is another model um, the uh, lenovo actually states that they are delivering a 60 watts battery that as well supports rapid charge pro and it actually has a bigger power uh, supply so the power brick is a bit bigger instead of the 135 watts that we get here they support 170 because of course you're going to need that extra juice to power up the battery in the same amount of time to half of its capacity another subtle difference uh, for the other um, 170 watts uh, version of the laptop is that you get a slightly brighter display so instead of the 250 nits display that you get with this one you get 300 nits of display on the other one and uh, well there is an extra bump in the in the refresh rate of course uh, they say that this panel right here is rated for 120 hertz while the other display is rated to all the way up to 165. Um, i'm not very happy with the display it seems quite uh, shadowy or it seems quite uh, blurry at times so i'm not really sure that this display is the best out there on the market but it is definitely okay for the amount of money that you spend on this laptop Thank you guys for choosing to watch this video today with me. This was Alex from Tech Fusion, and as always, I do hope to see you again in the next one. We'll have more videos of unboxing like laptops coming up in the near future, and as well, uh, ways to build your PC with new PC components. So definitely stick around for that and see you guys in the next ones. Peace.